Hello folks, welcome. So I have another video for you on a laptop using Linux Mint 21.1 Cinnamon. And uh, none of my videos are under uh, two minutes, but they all have timelines and chapters. I do uh, encourage that you subscribe, if not bookmark, and uh, that way you can uh, watch this in multiple sessions or days. You know, I also encourage that you read my bout section. And uh, one of the comments that I make in there is uh, Linux is for every age. So today I'm going to talk about something I would consider maybe medium, maybe advanced, but again, I'm going to not use any technical jargon. So I have a portable USB hard drive. It's an old one that I put inside of an enclosure to use as a backup drive. I'm going to format that with a file format that it can be read on any machine, pretty much. In other words, not only on Linux, but Microsoft Windows and Macs. So I'm possibly sharing files, or maybe not. But I'm going to show you how to do an automated way of backing information up to your USB drive. All right, so in either case, folks, welcome. And uh, this is Linux Mint 21.1 Cinnamon. So what I have here is a portable hard drive that I formatted. And uh, it's currently blank. So let me first start talking about how you would probably format something like that. This portable hard drive. There is a couple of utilities in here, but I'm going to use disks. So under D, this is a GNOME disk utility. And uh, I do have a dedicated video on this, but I'm just going to give you the short version today. And uh, so I have my standard booted in Linux Mint 21.1 Cinnamon here. And I actually have another partition there, but that's not important. So I have this spinning hard drive. How do I know this is USB connected? Because it has a power button on it. So um, I'm going to actually wipe this out. And I'm going to actually do this from scratch. So I'm going to just wipe this drive out and delete it. It's a 320 gig hard drive. Spinning hard drive. It's quite old. So I bought an $11 enclosure, or maybe it was 12 bucks on Amazon.com and threw that hard drive in there. And then I connected it to a USB 3 cable to this laptop. And my laptop is no spring chicken. It's about eight years old. Anyways, what I'm going to do here is I have some free space. And I'm going to open up my file manager briefly and let you see there's no backup drive, a USB backup. There's another drive here, but that's another animal. It's, that's this one right here. But this hard drive here is blank. So I'm going to hit plus, And then I'm going to use the whole thing and hit next. Then I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call that USB backup. Okay. Now, the next thing I need to decide is how do I want to um, format this thing? Well, I'm going to use FAT32. File Allocation Table, FAT. I could use Extension 4, that's Linux only, or NTFS with, uh, or NT File System, but I wanted to make it compatible not only with this machine, but also with Microsoft Windows and a Mac. So I'm going to choose FAT32, FAT. Okay, got a label. Um, why did I call it that? But you can call it whatever. I'm just trying to match up the script files that I wrote. I can edit that also. But more importantly, you'll see what I'm talking about in a second. So I'm calling my, my, my drive USB backup. And it's a good definition for it. Right now it's creating the file system. This is a spinning hard drive connected to a USB cable. So it'll take a couple seconds. I have some free space here. It's negligible. In other words, nothing. 2.1 megabytes here and 34 megabytes there. That's a far cry from 320 gigabytes. All right, it's finished. Now let me close this. Then I'm gonna open up the file manager Nemo. I'll let you see that it's right here. Now, anytime you are doing what I'm about to show you, I would suggest you mount it first. Mounting a USB drive is as easy as clicking on it. Okay, in my case, since I formatted that with FAT32, I don't need to deal with any permission issues. So it's ready for files. So we could do it the old fashioned way, or you can do it uh, my way. You can, uh, let's say you are wanting to copy all of your music stuff, all in one shot. My user for today is James. So if James wanted to copy his music stuff to this newly created USB backup drive, he could possibly right click and hit copy and then paste the folder in there. Then he would go, well, I want my pictures also, you know, lots of little wallpaper in here. And uh, I could also go 
right click copy and then paste again and the same thing goes with my documents and whatever other folders I have wouldn't it be better to do this in a little bit automated way all right so I wrote a couple of scripts in this folder called backup scripts there are three of them and you'll see why I wrote three of them here in a second so anyways I have my blank drive and I have some script files so let me execute one of the scripts and what this one is going to do is back up my download folder directly onto that drive so let me first double check my script to make sure they match as far as the names are concerned so this will be your first experience maybe with a script file or maybe not the only thing about script files is you write them in a text editor you don't do it in a word processor and they don't have extensions and when you write them after you get done you got to make sure that they're executable right properties permissions you have gotta allow them to be executed as a program alright with that said I'm gonna display that again so basically the statement starts with a with a bin bash statement you can see that up here in blue okay so uh, again all of my videos have timelines on them you can stop the video do a screenshot hand write it down subscribe bookmark my YouTube site whatever anyways that's the first statement I don't need the second statement below here is an rsync command rsync is also the same thing you use on your time shift when you uh, install Linux Mint you activate a time shift to make backup of your system files all I'm doing here is making backups of my personal files so rsync space dash a what does that stand for well I would highly encourage that you look up the rsync command on the internet but the dash a is archive there's many other uh, switches or options so after the a there's a space and a tilde a tilde is um, like if you look at your keyboard right next to the key on the left of your one it'll have that tilde symbol on it normally you hit the shift key for that so tilde forward slash downloads is the name of the folder that I'm trying to copy this one to that device there because it says media James backup where did I get that from well here's here's the here's the drive and I'm gonna to toggle this so it says media James backup in other words media my username is James today USB backup got it as long as that matches this script file will work if I rename this drive something different then I would have to fix it in here or fix the name of the drive whichever so what I'm going to do here is run it okay right now my my USB connected hard drive is flashing it's got a little blue light on it um, I have an old hard drive in there that uh, I bought that enclosure for like 12 bucks on amazon.com it has a blue light on it and it came with a USB cable I thought that was a pretty good bargain anyways it's syncing up my downloads folder and it's got a subfolder and another subfolder all right so let me go back to my scripts here so this one here contains not only one line but multiple lines so if I run this one it's it's gonna sync up documents pictures music and downloads okay we got that so far so what I'm gonna do to this drive is abuse it some more by deleting that I'll just click on that and hit delete and throw it in my trash can the beauty of formatting something with fat32 by the way is uh, you can share that on another machine in other words a Microsoft machine or maybe even a Mac so um, let's say I got some nice decent wallpaper you know I've got some weird wallpaper here I'm gonna hit the space bar let you see what that looks like you know stuff like that maybe and you want to bring that on another machine you know this is my wallpaper but I'm just saying if you had some wallpaper of your own all right so this you could do it manually I could just you know take my pictures folder and right click and copy and paste it right but I want to do this in an automated way I want to do all of those folders all at once so I'm just opening that up to let you see what's in there so there are four commands in here it's gonna sync up my documents pictures music and downloads all at the same time well sequentially but it's going to sync them up nonetheless so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to run that and my light is now flashing so I'm going to click this and let you see that it's building currently and you'll see another folder populate and a, th and a fourth folder populate 
if I continue talking. This uh, process is all dependent on what you've got in these folders and the speed of your hard drive. If you're using a USB 2, for instance, it's a little bit slower than a USB 3. If you got the, like my old hard drive, even though I got a USB 3 enclosure, that spinning hard drive is also a little bit slow. So now you see the third folder just populated and this will keep going and there'll be the fourth one will come in here in a second. So while it's doing this, we're going to go back into documents for a second and talk about these scripts. So you could write a single script in here, or you can write one that only does one thing. Like this one, for instance, will only do the documents only. All I did was borrow information from the original script and paste it into another fo uh, file. It's pretty simple to do, folks. So let me give you an example of that. I'm going to write a script right in front of you. So I'm going to first open up one of these to display it. I just want to borrow that command up there. So if I were to uh, highlight these lines, it doesn't matter if I do two or three at the same time. It really doesn't matter. So I could either right click or just use control C. So if I right click, I could do a copy, right? I can also use control C. Copy. And uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this down. I'm going to right click in the screen here and create an empty document. Then I'm going to open it and right click and hit paste. Okay. So that's basically the same file as the one I borrowed the text from. I think it was this one. Okay. However, what I can do in here is I can click in here and change that to something different. I'll use music as my example. All right, couple things that you need to be aware of. You need to be aware of spacing. So in other words, if I hit delete, that's not gonna work. Okay, so you need to have rsync space dash a for instance, and or whatever uh, option that you decide to use. Again, look up the R rsync statement online. Uh, tilde, music means home folder music and space forward slash media James backup that's the name of my drive what if you had another USB stick or drive well then you would just change the name of that all right so I'm gonna just use this and I'm going to hit save and as soon as I do that it turns blue okay that bin bash uh, bash stands for born again shell if you're curious so that first statement has to be there before you perform the rsync command all right I'm gonna close that and rename this file so we're gonna call this uh, USB, um, I don't know, music, right? This has no title right now or untitled. So we'll say USB music. You can call it whatever you want. So you need to do one more thing before running this because if you double click on that, it's just going to open just like that into a text editor because it's not executable right now. Right click, properties, permissions, allow to be executed as a program now it's ready to go all right these are done by the way as you notice that's four folders that i sunk up using this script right here okay so it performed all four of those well let's say i just wanted to do the music so let me clean this drive out let me abuse it some more even though i got the music folder i'm going to delete it anyways i just wanted to let you see what one of those script files can do so we're going to use music only. So again, let's take a look at it. We are going to rsync the media, I'm sorry, rsync my home folder music to uh, media James USB backup. That's the name of that drive. And again, how do I get the names of these things? You click on it and you toggle that entry bar. Media James USB backup. So my user is James today. Got that so far, yeah, hopefully. Currently nothing in there, right? Yep. Okay, now we're gonna double click on that and run it. So right now it's uh, my blue light special is flashing. In other words, it's transferring data and it's building up folders. And in a couple seconds, it'll be finished. The beauty of something like this though, <clears throat> excuse me, if you're doing uh, full sync ups, um, I'll give you an example if I decided uh, since I'm syncing up uh, music here 
and uh, I will uh, allow this thing to finish. And um, I'm going to add a file to it. I will create a text file. Why not? We'll call that um, A. Then I'll throw some text in there. Doesn't matter what it is. I'm just creating a text file. That's all I'm doing with junk in it. Okay, so we got this weird looking uh, gibberish. All right, so we're gonna go to the USB backup. And first of all, that file's not in there and it's finished because I started the sync process before I threw in that file, right? But now that I've added this A text, I, all I need to do is go back up there and find the same script and rerun it. So it was the music script. Now when I perform this, it is not going to sync up all the files. It's going to check to see if the folder exists on that device. And then it's going to compare this folder with that folder. And it'll find that there's one file that this one doesn't have and it'll sync the file only. Not, any, uh, not replicating everything. So this should be real quick. It's done. It's right here. So again, whether you are using the script files for multiple objects, again, I'm gonna open this with a text editor. You don't want to uh, create these things with a LibreOffice writer. You wanna use text editor. It's the simplest way to do things when you create script files. And don't forget, it's gotta start with that bin bash statement. And then you can put in as many folders as you want in here. As in my case, I'm syncing four folders at the same time. The, the, the other thing about this, since I formatted this with FAT32, in other words, the portable drive, I can take that drive and stick it on another computer and pull files off of that. So whatever I have in here, in this case music, I can take this to another Linux machine or another Microsoft machine or another Mac. As long as that machine can read WMAs and MP3s, that should work just fine. Because it's just a file, as one would say. Hopefully you found this useful information for you folks. But again, script files are easy to create. You can always do it the old-fashioned way. If you're trying to do this manually, it's always the copy process and paste. Copy and paste. You can do this from two windows also, drag and drop. But if you write a quick script file, this will do it for you. And the beauty of using script files too is when the, you make changes to here, as in this case, I will um, create a new folder. Call that test test one. And um, if I were to sync this up, uh, I don't know if I have a separate script file for docs. Uh, downloads, oh yeah, I do. Okay. I'm going to first run this one and I'm going to create another uh, another file in there. So right now it's uh, syncing up my documents folder and I'm going to add another folder to this. It's already finished. So now I'm going to create a third folder and call it uh, test test two. It could be a folder. It could be a file. It really doesn't matter. Now I'm going to run that same script on this um, USB dock. What does that thing look like? All it's doing is syncing up one folder, the documents folder. Okay, we could leave this open. It doesn't matter, but I'm just going to run it directly from here and hit run. And that file is already done. There it is, test test two. There's nothing in there, but it, it was just creating a, a folder. So basically what rsync did was, okay, Whatever you had in your documents folder, I'm going to compare it to the existing one on your USB device. It found that this folder was missing, so it sunk the folder only. It ignored everything else. So that makes that process rather quick when you already have your files already here. There's multiple uses for something like this. And some people don't like to do stuff like this. That's fine. I'm just giving you lots of options, folks, when it has to do with copying and pasting files on USB devices, in this case a hard drive. Thank you for watching folks, take care.